Okay. If you have your Bible with you, I want you to go to Job chapter 4. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and direct you into my Bible just in case you ain't got one so you can see it for yourself. So bear with me. Okay, this is Job chapter 4. Now, this is after Job had lost everything. This is after the devil robbed Job of everything. He was sitting in a pile of ashes. He was scraping his boils that he had from head to toe. And he had spoke. After Job opened his mouth, he cursed a day. And Job spoke and said, as Job was so frustrated that he cursed everything except for God. He even cursed the day that he was born, except for God. God loved Job, and Job loved God, as also we should. So as we go on, this is Job's friend Eliphaz, the Terminite. After letting Job mourn and go through his go through his hour there, Eliphaz opened up his mouth. If we assay to commune with thee, wilt thou be grieved? But who can hold who but who can withhold himself from speaking? He's saying, if I, if I try to have a word with you, Job, are you going to get upset? Or are you going to get gr grieved even more? But who can withhold himself from speaking, Job? Look what just happened. Behold, thou hast instructed many, and thou hast strengthened the weak hands. Thy words have upholden him that was falling, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. But now it is come upon you, and thou faintest. It toucheth thee, and thou art troubled. Is not this thy fear, thy confidence, thy hope, and the uprightness of thy ways? Remember, I pray thee, Whoever perished being innocent. Whoever perished being innocent. Eliphaz was sitting here trying to say, Job, you had to have sinned. You have had to have done something wrong to be tormented as you are being. Then he says in verse 7, Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent. Or where were the righteous cut off? Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. Sorry, folks, I keep getting interrupted here. Where were we? Verse 5. But now it come upon thee, and thou faintest. It touches thee, and thou art troubled. Is not this thy fear, thy confidence, thy hope, and the uprightness of thy ways? Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. By the blast of God they perish. And by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. The roaring of the lion and the voice of the fierce lion and the teeth of the young lions are broken. The old lion perisheth for lack of prey and the stout lion's whelps are scattered abroad. Now check this out. Now a thing was secretly brought to me. This verse 12. Now a thing was secretly brought to me, and my ear received a little thereof. 
in thoughts from the visions of the night when deep sleep falleth on men fear came upon me trembling which made all my bones to shake then a spirit passed before my face the hair of my flesh stood up it stood still but I could not discern the form thereof an image was before in my eyes there was silence and I heard a voice saying I, I believe this is the devil trying to tell Job I mean trying to tell Eliphaz he said shall mortal man be more just than God shall a man be more pure than his maker behold he put no trust in his servants and his angels he charged with folly how much less in them that dwell in houses of clay whose foundation is in the dust which are crushed before the moth they are destroyed from morning to evening they perish forever without any regarding it doth not their excellency which is in them go away they die even without wisdom now you see that there folks starting on verse 12 I would say 12 all the way down that sounds like a, a, a the devil came to Eliphaz in his sleep and was asking Eliphaz how can how can Job be more pure than God shall a man be more pure than his makers we said now this is a whisper in his ear so what does that tell you that tells you that the devil comes to people in their sleep and tries to you see how he's trying to steer Eliphaz into thinking that Job had sinned it had to be a sin for uh, all these things to happen to Job but you can just clearly see how the devil tried to use Eliphaz against Job interesting I tell you folks God is amazing and God is real now if I go a little bit back uh, to the beginning in chapter 1 of Job after it speaks of uh, how blessed Job was and his kids and how Job offered a sacrifice to the Lord for just in case any of his family sinned God put up a sacrifice anyway just in case but if you go down in chapter 1 on verse 6 it says now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them and the Lord said unto Satan whence comest thou then Satan answered the Lord and said from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it and the Lord said unto Satan hast thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth a perfect and upright man one that feareth God and escheweth evil then Satan answered the Lord and said doth Job fear God for not does Job fear God for nothing hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all 
that he has on every side. The devil's in there saying, haven't you put a force field around Job so that he can't be heard in any type of way? Thou hast blessed the works of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. That's what Job is all about. It's a big test. The devil wanted to take Job out, but the devil said, no. There's got to be a way that I could get Job to fall. If you take your force field from around him, Lord, uh, I bet you he cursed your face. But the reason why I wanted to read that to you is because the devil didn't come by himself. He came with the sons of God which are the B'nai Ha Elohim, the fallen ones, the watchers. Watch Trey Smith if you haven't ever seen any of his videos, and he'll break it down for you. Trey Smith, T-R-E-Y Smith, the legend. He's awesome. Check him out. But anyway, you see how that works there? So tell me. Is it sleep paralysis? Where they say something about you get paralyzed in your sleep? Or, hey, hush. Anyway. <laughs> Sons of God and the devil? Or sleep paralysis? Y'all, it's, it's up to you what you decide. But I'm going to tell you right now. Those demons are messing with you. And uh, they're trying to take you out. Now, let me tell you something. Um, I noticed when I was asleep all these years and these things were holding me down. I noticed that they would let me go in the daytime.